Hi everyone, this is Dr. Ruscio. I'm here with Mark who has had some nice results after reading Healthy Gut, Healthy You, and he's here today to share his story with us. So Mark, welcome. Hi, thank you. Tell us a little bit about um, before Healthy Gut, Healthy You, because I like to give people a synopsis of kind of the road up. What were your symptoms? What had you maybe been tinkering with? What did that all look like? Yeah, sure. And so it started about seven years ago and I was living in Hong Kong. Um, I, I was going through quite a lot of stress at the time. I ate a really, really bad diet looking back. <laughs> I was kind of terrified how bad it used to be. Just as an example, I used to post gym workout down a litre of chocolate milk, thinking it's a lot of protein and I'll be fine. Yeah. Being a skinny yeah. guy, it wasn't really a big deal to me. I didn't put weight on, so I thought it wasn't doing me any harm, but it obviously was. So I think um, the mixture of stress, terrible diet, and maybe living in a region of the world where the quality of water and the, the, the level, level of cleanliness of the water is fine for people that have grown up around that. Uh, but as a foreigner coming in, um, it probably wasn't so good for me. I started to get um, just discomfort initially and a bit of tightness in the throat and discomfort. And over a period of weeks, I thought it'll go soon, it'll go soon. And it didn't, um, and it started to get a little bit worse. I started to see my GP, my doctor, um, and they just gave me some basic recommendations saying just wait a little bit longer, maybe try relax, that kind of stuff. Um, nothing helped, and it got gradually worse. Year so there year. was indigestion as, as well as a feeling of tightness in the throat? Um, if I ate uh, something such as, I don't know if you have Weetabix in, in the US, but uh, if you ate like a heavy wheat cereal with lots of milk or something like that, maybe for a day or so I get tightness here. But the main symptom was just general discomfort and like a gnawing feeling in the stomach and some cramps in the morning or maybe at night. And it, I think that messed with my head a little bit as well. It, it caused me dis, it, it caused a little bit of confusion and brain fog, which caused me problems at work. Sure, um, sure. And, and these are all a bait and they come and go, right? So it's very difficult and frustrating to describe to a doctor sometimes, um, especially when it's the general practitioner, the, 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 usually just thinking he's stressed and he's not been eating very well. Um, so I mean, o over the next three or four years, really, I tried loads of different stuff. So I started off doing the basic things like um, just getting off the shelf probiotics, um, trying to change my diet, eating a little bit more healthily, exercising, uh, meditation. Um, the one thing that did work for about a year and a half, maybe two years, was following the FODMAP diet. And that, that did initially work. Um, but then towards the, towards the end of that two years, it started to tail off. So I started to avoid alcohol. Um, I tried, um, what else did I do? Oh, the most extreme thing I tried was FMT under supervision of a gastroenterologist um, also didn't work. And it was really bad results for me, actually. It was, it was a really, really horrible experience. Um, so there, there's a good thing I just, just want to piggyback on really quick, because one of the things that some patients will think is that FMT is the best, most powerful therapy that can be used for your gut. Understandably so, um, partially because it's Pretty invasive. <laughs> uh, the other is because it's a new therapy and sometimes we conflate new with better or good. And I routinely advise patients to leave FMT because it is a viable option to the very end of the um, kind of treatment road for the very reasons that you're describing. Mm. It was a really weird experience for me. I, I read a lot about it and I thought a lot about it beforehand. And I, I've got an engineering science background, so I like to read up on as many papers that are freely available as possible. Um, but the experience I had um, was, was I, I felt extremely ill. I, I, I tried three to four times, and after each one, I felt like I just wanted to curl up into a ball and die. Mm. It was really, mm. really horrible experience. Um, but that could have been the donor that I was using. Um, I was recommended to go with my wife as the person I was most in closest proximity to. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. Yeah. Um, so by that point, I then just reverted back to a semi FODMAP diet and just just hoped for the days where I felt healthier. Um, mm -hmm. And it was common to despair, you know, because you're feeling extremely sick. Um, it's quite debilitating, I've, I, I felt, and 
it affected my mind as well and I had a hard job um yeah so I then um got chatting to a group of people weirdly in the US in, in Colorado and they recommended they recommended your name and one other that's suddenly suddenly um suddenly lost me um if I if I remember I'll mention it before the video is up um, but they mentioned your name and I started to listen to one or two of your podcasts and they're short podcasts sort of quite easily digestible. Um, and then I um, got your book, I read it on Kindle and I devoured it in about a week and a bit. Mm. And it was great because it had loads of the stuff I was familiar with that I read about in different papers and things like that. But I just tried them on their own. I just tried them piecemeal. Um, and yeah, it brings some benefits. Like for example, I found doing a 36 hour, 72 hour fast helped, but then I'd go right back into eating a relatively high carb diet um, and not doing anything else to follow up on it and just hoping that that would be the one-off fix. And um, whereas putting into a framework really, really did work for me, um, but I needed to follow all of it. And I went through certain parts of the great innate um processing um i did them maybe two yeah two times especially the earlier stuff um yeah it was a slow going process for me as well i was hoping i was telling myself when i finished the book i don't know four or five months i'll be done and i'll be fixed but it took me a year um and i really had to persist and i think if i'd not hit such lows and if i'd not hit rock bottom i wouldn't have had the perseverance to sort of stick with it sure. you know, on the street. Sure. Um, so I think that's one of my things that I, I do recommend your book to a lot of people. It's one of the things I say is the first step is the the fast. And if you're put off by doing a five day fast, then you've not hit rock bottom yet because mm. it, 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 it really has to be that terrible for you to be motivated enough to do it. And honestly, the fast wasn't anywhere near as bad as I, I thought it yeah. would be. The modified fasting really isn't too hard because you do have a source of calories. Just to clarify for people, it's not an exclusive fast. You do have the option of either bone broth or if you do master's cleanse solution. For two to four days, you can go longer if you want. Um, let's jump really quick to where you are now. Uh, are all the symptoms gone? And then let's come back to what the road through Healthy Guy Healthy You look like. So since finishing... Um, I'd say I wrapped it up fully um, September last year. And I didn't, me and my wife are both not wanting to sort of count our chickens really, um, but it's, it's been fine until maybe about a month ago. And it started to come back a little bit. So I've now got like, um, like a, a lump in my throat kind of sensation. Um, but other than that, no gut issues like, um, like they used to be and no brain fogs coming back. So to, I've, I've been biding my time to sort of start taking more seriously again, but um, yeah, my, this lump in my throat is back a little bit, but it's not a big deal. And um, so I'm now going back to the early stages. So maybe seven years of this indigestion, gas, and this kind of connected brain fog. So seven years, with, and and about a year that has now been resolved, yeah. and you've maintained that other than maybe a slight regression of the lump in the throat, which you're now going to start tinkering to address. Is that a fair encapsulation? Exactly. Um, that's exactly right. And I'm not despairing this time because I feel I've got this structure to work through. And the symptoms I have this time are far more mild. Um, and I, I feel confident that I don't have to go through all the eight steps this time. But if I do, I will. Um, it's worth it. You know, <laughs> um, there's, there's a path for me to follow which will resolve this. And it's not that much of a problem, to be honest. Um, I think one important thing that, that that looking back was being quite making sure that I was being quite honest with myself about about my diet and my relationship to food. Like I said, I'm a skinny guy, so I kind of don't worry about what food I eat. I didn't used to worry about what food I eat right. and what food I used to eat. Um, but I'd eat, I'd eat terribly. I'd eat terribly, and mm -hmm. and I never really took responsibility for that. It's one of the, maybe the liabilities of being thin is you feel like you can get away with a lot more, which I actually fell into that, that same category. Um, but for me, it was predominantly neurological um, that I would notice. It was more food reactive brain fog and it took me a little while to also associate, I can kind of eat whatever I want and my body composition won't change, but I'll feel it more so in my head, which uh, to me is one of the most debilitating symptoms. So I, I, I feel your pain there, but I'm glad you were able to kind of 
connect those dots. And, and you learn that with a FOD map, uh, like you were saying, with going through the initial phase of the Healthy Good Healthy Good protocol, did any other dietary realizations occur? Any of the dietary realizations? I think from do, doing the, the recommended fast that you, you had in the book did, did help me exercise more self-control over what food I did and didn't eat. Um, and then after that, I'm following the paleo diet, diet. I don't know if this is normal or not, but I really felt like once I was properly into the paleo diet, I stopped craving food. Oh yeah, that's very, very commonly reported. Yeah, it, it was quite strange because, I mean, even normally now and um, the past year, if someone's eating, I know a bit of delicious looking cake, and I know it's not got any wheat in there, I'll maybe have some, you know. Whereas on on, on the paleo diet, when I really stick stick to it, I I didn't really crave anything. I could watch people eat a delicious snack in front of me and just pass. It's a great know? feeling, isn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was. It was like real control. And if you know that the diet is causing the problem in the first place, to know that you don't need to do it, it helps you get on this virtuous cycle, you know. Um, right. So that was, a, that was a cool insight around diet. Um, one one thing that didn't work for me diet dietary-wise was, um, I think it's the seventh step, I can't remember, um, increasing the fibre intake um that that ha that didn't have the desired effect for me and and didn't mess with my gut much but the brain fog was really quite intense um so i i tried that a few times and then tried to do it in very small amounts but as soon as i got to over a yeah. teaspoon a day again it, it, it caused me problems um, i'm glad you mentioned that because there are you know there, there are some camps on the internet that um are really all about optimizing dietary fiber intake, which is all fine and good in and of itself, but for some people, trying to optimize fiber intake or really maximize, I should say, fiber intake doesn't go well for their gut. And that's where kind of zooming out and kind of connecting to a point you said earlier, you have all these different things that you've read about, but Healthy Gut Healthy You finally puts them into an organized structure to help you see well, I did this, that helped. I did this, that helped. I went to the higher fiber, that didn't help. I isolated that variable. I tried it a few times. Now I clearly can see that higher fiber intake doesn't work for me. And I think part of the thing that makes it so hard for people to finally feel also, like you said, like they're a little bit empowered or not worried about having a, a mini regression is needing to have learned along that road what works for you and what doesn't work for you. And that's, that's part of the rationale behind instead of doing every step kind of all at once and throwing the kitchen sink at you, we break it down into steps so you can learn what works for your system and what doesn't work for your system. And then you're empowered when you do have a regression to say, okay, this is what really worked well for me. Over the past several months, I've been feeling better. I've kind of been loosening things up, but now I know where to go back to in order to feel better. And the analogy I use for people who sometimes frame this the wrong way, like, oh, is there something wrong with my gut and I'm always going to have to do this? Not really. I oftentimes parallel a musculoskeletal analogy. Like if you had a really bad, let's say, a hamstring sprain in college, you may temporarily need to go back to some of your stretches and exercises to rebalance some of that musculature. It doesn't mean anything is wrong. It just means here's something that you need to give a little bit of attention to periodically and then everything's fine yeah that, that's exactly how it feels it, the, the analogy you use with having a sprain or a, an injury like a physical injury on a joint or something it does kind of feel like that like you know it's still maybe there you just need to give it a bit of attention and get it back to normal again exactly and um, i think i did have one more one more insight around that again through your book from uh, around diets was i I've realized if I'd spoken to myself 10 years ago and said, hey, look, you're going to have to completely change your diet. I don't think I, the old Mark couldn't have done it. Um, and I think just through doing it slowly and doing these different things and starting with a fast and then doing these sort of slow increments, it definitely changes my relationship to food. And real, I now realize it's all just a habit. So foods that I shouldn't eat, like high fiber foods or a lot of food in my diet, it's just through habit, I now no longer crave them. So learning all these little things like avoid too much fiber or more than two coffees a day isn't great for my gut and that'll start to put me on a downward spiral. After 
a while, I stop craving that stuff anyway. And it's just, I just learn to not crave stuff. Right. And it's not unpleasant. I enjoy my diet just as much as I did 10 years ago. I just eat, I eat better now. That's all. Yes, yeah, it's quite nice to realize. Yeah, if you can learn through the, through the process, it's funny how once you make some changes, even though they, you know, you may kind of be dragging your feet at first as you start the changes, but then as you have a clearer mind, less symptoms, better energy, you start to associate the new foods to the new feelings, and it really kind of deprograms the cravings that you had prior because you now start to see the association between those foods and feeling poorly, and it really does kind of uh, dampen the cravings for those foods, as, as well as when you're physiologically healthier and less inflamed, people do seem to crave less, which is also another thing that um, really kind of compounds together. So it's almost like as you start getting better, you get better and better and better because the cravings abate, the cravings stop you from flaring, those flarings stop you from having the satiation problems where one of the analogies or examples I've used is sometimes when people are tired or they have brain fog, they think they should eat to improve their energy and improve their mental clarity. Um, whereas that's probably because they're inflamed, the inflammation is causing those symptoms and, and there's some weird reflexive mechanism in the body where we sometimes want to try to eat our way out of a problem and that can even make the problem worse. So I'm glad that mm -hmm. you've connected those dots. It's kind of like um, you know, teaching you to fish rather than, than giving you a fish. Um, yeah. What else, with, with other aspects, um, probiotics, antimicrobials, elemental dieting, anything else there that really seemed to help you? It's the fast, the, the um, paleo, and then following the, 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 the regimen. So I went through all the stages, right? Mm -hmm. So um, it, it's a while ago now, coming up to a year, but I guess it was the, um, the extracts and the, 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 the herbal supplements. Yep, the herbal antimicrobials. Yeah, so I followed all that. Um, and that wasn't always easy, but because it was cyclical and you moved into different things after a few weeks, it was fine. It was fine. I went through that stuff twice. Um, I don't think I learned anything from those specifically, um, but I am glad I did. I took that route as opposed to what I tried in, in previous years, which was searching online for a regimen of uh, antibiotics Right. mega doses and going to a, a general practitioner and saying i'd like to do this please and that was hard so the, the, it was a little bit more of a softly softly approach over a longer period and i i preferred that and i guess maybe yeah maybe one thing other thing i i learned was that because there's so many stages because i knew it was going to take a while to start to view my stomach as something that will take time to heal and it will take time to improve and it's a slow deliberate process I'm going through as opposed to looking for quick fixes. Now, question there for you. Um, did you notice, I'm hoping you noticed that even though it's relatively slow, meaning if we're looking at um, taking an Advil, sure, you'll feel better in 20 minutes. Um, and this was a number of months in your case, but I'm assuming that every month there was a degree of improvement so that even though it was a longer road, you felt like you were seeing some improvement along the way, helping to keep you engaged and motivated. Is that fair or was your road a little bit different? I felt, yeah, it's a really good question. I felt I made gradual improvements and um, through the early, the early stages, especially the first four or five stages, especially. Um, but I felt that it all started to really come together towards the end uh, and all I can really put my finger on is that I started to put, bring in more obvious, um, more obvious steps, to just basic self-discipline, like not eating at 10 p.m. before I go to bed, um, being a little bit more disciplined with uh, taking digestive enzymes after a meal. Right. Um, those kind of things, I think, helped compound it. And I think in the background, I guess my gut health was improving anyway. And maybe, like you said, when things are getting better, you become... You, you become more on top of your game anyway, and then it's a virtuous cycle. So, so I felt it was very much like a, an exponential kind of increased improvement, and I just okay. had to persist. And I didn't really move to the next step until I felt I'd made a noticeable improvement, even if it's just five, ten percent improvement. Otherwise, I did it again and carried on. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good to hear because 
you know, there's different trajectories. Some people improve a lot out of the gate and then it's a slower road to the rest of the way. They probably have the easier road, but then there are some that's a little bit of a slower build and exponential at the end. And it's important just to identify these patterns so that people don't feel like what's happening to them is abnormal. Right. And I was actually more like yourself where after I resolved the parasitic issue that I had, it was kind of a slow slope. And then I looked back to my life a few months prior and said, wow, there was no way I could have been in classes all day, come home, went to the gym, come home and, and uh, studied. I would have needed at least two naps during the day um, prior. And I didn't realize it until three months later or so. I was doing all that stuff with no nap and just great energy all the way through. So good to identify these patterns to help people feel like they uh, they fit into some sort of, sort of camp to help them mm. keep, uh, keep on the plan. Yeah, the age. I see. That's interesting. Well, Mark, is there is there anything else you want to share with people? This has been great. I'm, I'm super appreciative of, of this because um, people really do benefit from these. We get such great feedback on the sharing of these stories. Is there anything else that you want to leave people with? Um, I wanted to say thank you to you for, for putting the time to get to write that book. It really did help. Like um, it, my quality of life and my mental health was really terrible going through periods of that. So thank you very much. And thank you to your wider team as well. Um, your your team on the forums were super helpful. Right. Um, the content you have was fantastic. So thank you. Awesome. Yeah, you're welcome. I mean, th these exact stories are, are really the, the win in our sales to keep us motivated. Because um, I've been in your position, I know how awful I felt and how I would have done anything not to feel that brain fog and, and, and the fatigue and everything else. Um, you know, what a gift to feel well. We, we take it for granted um, sometimes that, you know, I'm just walking down the street and I have normal energy and normal cognition uh, as opposed to, oh, I feel bloated or painful or foggy, like I'm disengaged or goofy. Um, when you don't have that, you realize how much we take it for granted, how much of a gift health really is. So it really makes it worth it. So I'm thrilled that you're feeling better. Thank you for the compliment. And thank you again for sharing your story. Thank you.